Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And what's up, guys? I hope you're having a great time. We're having a tropical storm here these past few days. I don't even know if it was a tropical storm as much as it was a lot of rain. But you know how that goes. Sometimes it's good for breeding uh, action. So I've been putting some males with some females just to, you know, for shits and giggles and see what happens. Uh, we had a lot of stuff go on over the last couple days. I haven't really had time to do the video, so we're going to throw a little potpourri of stuff. Pulled some eggs, hatched some clutches. I had a boa litter that was actually successful. I guess my boa, my, actually I had two, but I'm only gonna show you one today. We'll show you the next one tomorrow and the video. This was an interesting um, breeding and I learned something that I didn't learn. And sometimes, you know, I always say we learn every day. I bred a, a red baron, which is a super onyx. Remember, this is the dwarf boas we're talking about now. Super onyx, T positive. Okay, so that's the two copies of the onyx gene with the, uh, the Honduran tea positive, and I bred it to an Inca, which is a really cool looking pattern, you know, uh, and, and slightly colored uh, altering morph. An Inca that's head tea positive. So I was hoping to produce Inca onyxes, because remember, everything will be onyx because we have a super onyx male. I wanted to produce Inca onyx tea positives, but I didn't get it. I got like 10 babies that were, some were Inca onyx, you'll see. Um, and we're gonna go in more depth uh, later down the road once they shed, but, and some were just onyx, but we didn't get any T positives. And I was like, what's going on here? And, you know, unless the odds guys were really bad on me. And I found out something that I didn't know from my good friend, Mike Weitzman, that the Nicaraguan uh, T positive line, flies coming after me, the Nicaraguan T positive line is not compatible with the Honduran T positive line. What that means is that when you breed them together, you get double hats. You don't get visual T positives. And so I got double hats for Honduran T positive, Nicaraguan T positive. Now, it's kind of, it's kind of sucks in a sense, in one sense, but in another sense, I wonder what the double recessive would look like. Two T positives together. So down the road, if I breed these to each other, we could possibly produce some really, really cool stuff. So anyway, I learned something. Hopefully I'll pass that knowledge on to you. Honduran T positive, Nicaraguan T positive, not compatible. And from what my good friend Warren Booth told me, the Honduran tea positives and the Costa Rican tea positives are actually compatible. I didn't know that. So that might be something down the road I do since I do have those as well. But uh, for now, uh, I learned my lesson. Let's go take a look and take a see what we got. Yes, it is that time again. It's very late on a Saturday night. Actually, technically it's Sunday morning. It's July 4th, so happy 4th of July. We have some fireworks here. We have a beautiful pastel pinstripe head clown sitting on a clutch of eggs. <laughs> this is two years in a row. She bred for me. She produced some really nice babies last year. Got some beautiful banana pinstripe clowns, which I'm crazy about, I gotta be honest with you. I love it. You know, because the um, clown, anything uh, banana clown looks great, but pinstripe, when you add that um, clown to it, really takes away a lot of the pinstriping, but it still leaves enough to look make it look really cool. And then of course the banana makes everything, just reduces that dark pigments and adds so much color to it. So this year I decided to go different. Instead of going with a lot of color, I went with the GHI Mojave Pastel Clown, which is gonna add a lot of darkness to this. So we'll see what happens. Uh, obviously I love GHI Mojave Clowns, if I could make more, that would be great. I wonder what J.H.I. Mojave uh, pinstripe clowns would look like. That That's uh, really what I'm kind of interested in seeing. This girl looks like she did really, really well. And wow, that's a nice little clutch of eggs she's got in there. So hopefully we'll hit some cool clown stuff. We're going to pull her, put her in a nice clean tub, get those eggs out, candle them, and uh, put them in the egg box. Man, GHI Mojave. I'm gonna show you guys a little GHI Mojave just because I think uh, some, you know, some of you are beginners, some of you just get into it. I wanna show you what's so spectacular about it. All right, here's the GHI Mojave that started it all. As you can see, this is just two genes, GHI, which darkens everything, Mojave, which when combined with this GHI gene, GHI, by the way, stands for God of Habit. Um, Matt Lair actually found that gene and Look at this darkness. This is, now, this is a very, very nice GHI Mojave. It's so clean. It's dark, dark chocolate brown with those nice 
dorsal stripes. A lot of times they, they, they don't look this, this solid. Um, this is a really nice male. I, I produced a lot of babies with this guy over the years, but I wanted to take it up another notch. So my friend, uh, Adam Wilkes, who actually sold me this one too. When I was just getting into my collection, he sold me his collection. He got out of it for like a year or so. Then he got back into it. Um, I don't know if he actually produced his, his GHI Mojave clown with the female he kept. I think there was a sister to this, but I'm going to show you the GHI Mojave pastel clown that I bought from him. So there's the GHI Mojave pastel clown. Now you can see when you add clown to that GHI Mojave, and of course the pastel is lightning everything up, you can see that things change. But I'm still so cool. The GHI Mojave combination just, it just does something together. It makes a crazy, crazy looking uh, combination. And with clown, it looks even wackier. Breeding this to a coral glow, Mandarin, believe it or not. So we'll, we'll see what we get from that. But um, having said that, let's take a look and pull some babies. And uh, I don't know what they're gonna look like, but we'll find out. It's so funny because here she is all cleaned up. She's completely emptied out. Checked her, always check underneath the ventral surface. You'll see they're nice and hollowed out. You'll know there's no eggs left. I always thought pinstripe was not such a, eh, I was like not so thrilled with it when I first got into the ball python breeding. So I was so enamored with like pied and clown. But you know, I really, really like pinstripe. I'm, it's growing on me more and more and I've produced the Orange Dream Cryptic Ultramel orange, um, pinstripes. And they're, they just, they just, this it's different. I mean, it really, it's probably alters the pattern, you know, so much. And yet it doesn't ruin things. I guess that's the best way to putting it. It makes them better, you know. And uh, so that's why I continue to work with Pinstripe. And I'm actually incorporating more and more Pinstripe into my collection, believe it or not, because of that. It's one of these genes that was amazing when it first came out. And then people forgot about it. And I think people are rediscovering it. I really do. All right, there we go. 10 beautiful eggs, veins, embryos, everything you could possibly ask for in a clutch. So, you know, with the mom being a, a pinstripe pastel head clown and the father being a visual clown, GHI Mojave pastel, um, we got some pretty good odds that we're gonna, you know, hit clowns. I mean, I mean, statistically five of these should be clowns. We could get more, we could get less, you know, but we're gonna get some clowns in this clutch. I'm hoping we get some GHI Mojave clowns. I produced a female two years ago, Pablo, who works for me. <laughs> he connived me into selling it to him. It was like the first one I produced of last year. And uh, this snake is almost ready to breed. The thing is a monster eater. And she's gorgeous. I, sh I should have kept her, but you know, sometimes you let, you let a few slip through your fingers, you know, here and there. I'm glad he got it, though, because uh, I'm friends with him, so. Anyway. Here's a good clutch. It's going in, and uh, hopefully we're going to get some nice babies. I'd actually like to see what it... I'd like to produce a GHR Mojave clown, but a GHR Mojave pinstripe clown would be really cool. And uh, I would like to see what a super pastel Mojave, GHR Mojave clown looks like. So, I don't know. I don't know if I'll see all that, but got some good odds here. Meet my new blue tree monitors. That's my girl. That's my boy. Gorgeous. Really nice. Come from, from Anthony, Azzy, in Rhode Island. He drove him down here. Really nice. Very good. I'm still setting up the t this. This is just a makeshift night vision cage I set up here for them. But it's gonna get, I'm gonna be building them a cage, an enclosure. Um, I gotta get some, I still have some water bowls to set up. This is just temporary right now, but they're super cool. I love these guys. I'm gonna give you a more in-depth interview about them and video about them as I start to set up their enclosure better. Really cool. I'm totally into these monitors, these tree monitors. So I'm trying to clean my boas out, and I had no clue that this girl was even rabid. Nothing. I had a male in with her still. 
I had no clue they had been eating perfectly. This girl might have had this clutch who knows how long. These babies look mature. Look at the slug that's in there. It's, I don't want to get bit by her, but the slug is like really old and dried up. There's live babies, and it just goes to show you these, these, these snakes know what to do. This, these babies have probably been here for a long time, and the male is in with them. Look at this. We have a whole family in here. This is incredible. I was, I was literally cleaning the tub out, and I was being attacked by this female. I said, wait a minute. You know what? This female never attacks. Something's going on here. This is an Inca, which is 100% head T positive. That I bred to my Red Baron, which is a Super Onyx T positive. So we were looking for some Onyx T positive Incas. I see some dark snakes now. I'm gonna have to do, I gotta get this female out of here because she's never gonna let me touch these babies, so. Maybe I'll get the male out first, then I'll go for the female. Wow, what a surprise. I was just saying how bad my boa season's been going. This is a really nice born on the 4th of July surprise. Sorry for the disgusting uh, paper towels in there, but that's what happens when these things lay or have a litter and then you don't know about it and it all dries up. <laughs> Holy mackerel. I see some dark snakes there, so there's definitely some, uh, there's de everything should theoretically be Inca. I mean, it should be Onyx. 50% of that should be Inca, and then we should get some T-positive stuff in there. I see something looking T-positive in there that's looking kind of interesting, although that could be the tail of the Red Baron. All right, let me see if I can pull these out. All right, here they are. Uh, I have a feeling that the female that I had bought that was Inca had T-positive. I don't think she's T-positive. I don't think she was had T-positive. I think that was possibly uh, mistake from the person I bought it from because I, I would imagine that we would have gotten a, a T positive unless the T positive that's in here is not compatible with the Honduran T positive in my Red Baron. Red Baron is a um, super onyx Honduran T positive. So that's something I have to explore. I might have double hats here. I don't know. Um, doesn't seem likely, but this is definitely a, a, an Inca onyx. Look at that. Super freak there. These are really nice, dark, steel gray looking snakes. Um, that one's really, this one is really nice. Look at that. It's got like a stripe down it. And then you got the Inca pattern on the side here. But it's like a single like stripe down the back. These are going to have to shed out, really, before I really can examine all these guys. They're all, they're all onyx, so. This, the Red Baron is a super onyx. 50% of these should be, 50% um, should be Incas. And then they all will be, at the very least, T-positive. I don't think any of these are visual T-positive, which is weird. So I don't know if they're double head T-positives or if they're just single head T-positives and maybe the, the mother was not a T-positive. I gotta explore, look into that. But definitely some cool looking, you guys like black, dark, they almost look axanthic. I mean, they also look, uh, excuse me, anaerythristic. But onyxes look like that anyway, you know. There's very little red in here. I, w I would almost swear that there's, you know, although, because the, the, onyxes are very red. I wonder if they both had an anery gene they were carrying, but that, it's weird. Got to totally, see how these look when they shed out. This one's a little lighter right here. Very interesting. All right, I'll keep you guys updated on this litter. Some of these will be available. Very, very interesting. I don't think, I think this might be the first Onyx Inca. I don't think anyone's done that, so. Could have a world's first here. Let's see if we can get a good picture of these things. Really interesting. I like how it's all striped. Onyx can cause striping, and you know, I wouldn't be surprised if mixing it with Inca would do that. Only one slug too. Pretty good. Pretty good litter. Try to get the other one. See if he'll eat. That's the, that's the boy. The girl just 38. Took it. Alright, look at that. That's cool. That's really cool. 
can't wait to change the setup. I hate the way I have them set up right now. It's like so ghetto. It's a lot of room, but they need to climb these guys. I'm gonna take the rest of the chicken. I'm just gonna put it in a bowl and I'm gonna put it in there and see if they um, eat it. They, at least they each took a piece. That's good. I feel like at least they're eating something. You know, trust is really important with these guys and you know, I feel really good that I got their trust and they're eating out of my hands. I've held them before. So, I'm trying to really just socialize them. They're kind of socialized already, but I want them to trust me so they know me and they, you know, they can, they know you, they know the owner, they can smell you. They can tell, you know, if you're, you know, safe for them to be with, etc., etc. So, little by little, we'll keep doing more. We'll decorate this tank a little bit better, this cage, and then we're gonna build a big one too. Right now, I mean, it's just pretty bare. I'm trying to look for some tree logs and stuff like that I can put in here.